In my journey for customizing a battle map toolset that allows users to create their own content using my artwork, like the asset pack I made for Dungeon Draft, I found the final piece of the puzzle for building fully animated and customizable battle maps in Foundry Virtual Tabletop. Unlike Roll20, which only allowed me to add in basic animation assets on loop or playing them individually, Foundry makes it possible for me to write macros that activate any sort of animation or even a series of animations with just one click of a button. Not only creating this sense of a living battle map, but also one you can control during gameplay. The module I'll be showcasing in this video will actually be available for free on my Patreon, so you can actually playtest it yourself if you're in possession of a copy of Foundry Virtual Tabletop. So be sure to check my links in the description below. There are multiple types of animations you'll see in this video. Looped ones are simply tiles placed on top of the map I exported from Dungeon Draft. Then there are the ones that are controlled by macros, most of which are controlled using a wonderful module called FX Master by Uman. In this first part of this video, what you've been seeing is what these animations look like from the perspective of the player. Now to get a better understanding of what is going on on the back, let's check out the DM side of things. The first series of buttons you'll see down here in part 1 of the macro bar are all used to control animations in the entrance of Hall of My Dungeon. There are two types of animation in the first part. Ruins and a trap. Runes control a macro that simply says, play the animation, and once it's finished, drop a still of the final image on top of the map. The trap, on the other hand, is a basic video macro you'll find in the FX Master module that just says, play the animation when I click. Once the players have activated all the runes in this area, and were able to survive the fire trap, the DM can unlock the door that allows them to move forward. In this module, you'll also see I've added in custom markers that make it super easy for the DM to read up on each room, custom tokens for my monsters, and some magic item art that I'll get into later. Next, let's check out one of the 8 main rooms of the dungeon I made here, featuring one of my floating ice or snow orbs. Encased inside is a powerful magic item that the players will need to release. Doing so, however, activates the area. In this particular room, activating it means I get to drop in my paper whirlwinds. This is a very basic macro that says drop in these three tiles at this location. They stay in for as long as the DM keeps them there. You can simply click and delete them once combat has been completed. The macro attached to showcase this clearing of the area turns off the floating orb as it melts into the well underneath, and tiles are placed on the side here to show that the ice running underneath the area has now also melted. By having these tiles turn invisible instead of deleting them, the DM can very easily reset the dungeon by deleting the new tiles and clicking the reset button that makes all of the invisible tiles visible once again. You'll see that happen here in my tomb, where the top two were invisible from a previous test, and I simply click to reset them. This area actually contains the most complex of all macros I have in my dungeon here. What it does, it says to hide the original tile of the closed tomb, play the animation of, the, of it opening, and then drop in the open tomb tile at the end of the animation. It does this for each of the four tombs in the area, and does it with a couple of milliseconds between each animation. That way, you don't get all the four tombs opening at the exact same time, but have it look more natural as the skeletons inside are being awakened by the magic of the orb inside this room. Taking a closer look at the marker here, we'll see info on how to manage these animations in this room, including the stats of what creatures are being summoned and the stats for the magic item locked inside the orb. This dungeon has 7 unique magic items that all function inside the dungeon. Some are of aid to the players, some are cursed. The twist is that you have to activate them all to clear the dungeon, 
and touching one automatically makes it attuned and attached to that specific character. So you'll have to choose wisely when making the decision of who will grab each item. Most of my monsters in this dungeon also come with a fun little twist. Each one with their own stat block and a token in the creature list. Now what I haven't mentioned yet is to make navigating my macros easy, I made sure that each marker is numbered. So you'll just have to look for the number of the marker in the area and find the macro with the same number in the bar to activate the area. Now I had planned on going into detail about the macros, but you can actually just download this module yourself and check out each macro I've written there, with some serious help from Uman himself and Matt from Encounter Library, whose tutorials on Foundry made it possible for me to create this map, so be sure to check those out. Now that I finally went full circle on this project, I plan on expanding my library next, which will include a series of assets to make your own animated town or region maps. Once those are done, I plan on doing a start to finish tutorial of each step I go through building these custom animated battle maps, so be on the lookout for that in the future. <laughs>